Hey everyone, in this video I'll explain a physical property known as specific heat or specific heat capacity. Remember from the last video that heat can transfer when two objects of different temperatures come in contact with one another. The heat will always flow from the warmer object to the cooler object. Like when you pick up a cold bottle of soda, your warmer hand will transfer heat to the colder bottle of soda or a cup of coffee with a cool spoon added in, the warmer coffee will transfer heat into the colder spoon. In any of these examples, the warmer object will cool down while the cooler object will warm up until both objects are the same temperature. So in this video, we're going to take a closer look at the types of temperature changes that heat can cause when it's transferred into a substance. So to do this, we're going to imagine a beach scene where sun is transferring heat to the sand and the ocean water. So here's my beach scene and here's my sun. Now we can assume that if the sun is heating the water and the sand, two different substances, but is heating the water and the sand for the same amount of time, let's say five minutes, since it's the same amount of time, the sun might transfer the same amount of heat to both of those substances. Let's say the sun transfers 10,000 joules to the water, and in that same quantity of time, it transfers the same 10,000 joules to the sand. The weird part is that even though the same amount of heat was added to the water in the sand, there's very different temperature changes that we observe. The sand, of course, gets much, much hotter with a larger temperature increase, while the water stays much cooler and has a much smaller temperature increase. And we know this from experience, right? Anytime you've walked on sand compared to walking in water, the sand is much, much hotter. So what you're seeing here is that different substances absorb heat differently. The sand and the water both got 10,000 joules, but that 10,000 joules had a very different effect. The 10,000 joules causes a large increase in the temperature of the sand, but a much smaller temperature increase in the water. And the name for the property that causes this difference is heat capacity. Let's take a closer look at heat capacity with another example. Here we're going to imagine heating equal masses of 25 degrees Celsius water and 25 degrees Celsius oil for exactly one minute. So here I've got 100 grams of water, that water is at 25 degrees Celsius, and next to it I've got 100 grams of oil also at 25 degrees Celsius. And they're being heated from below with these burners and since we're heating both beakers for one minute we can also assume that they both absorb the same amount of heat. Let's just say 2000 joules goes into the water and the exact same 2000 joules goes into the oil. Now just like we saw in our beach scene with sand and water here the water and the oil are going to have very different temperature changes even though they both got the same 2000 joules. For the water its temperature is going to increase to 30 degrees so it went up by 5. The oil is going to increase all the way to 60 degrees, so a much larger temperature increase for the oil. This means that the water has a much greater capacity to absorb heat than the oil, or has a greater heat capacity than the oil. Here's a nice summary statement to describe what you've just saw. Substances like the water with a higher heat capacity will absorb or release heat with smaller temperature changes. That's one of our key ideas for this video. Make sure you pause and write it down. Now most of the time in physics and chemistry we use a slightly more formalized version of heat capacity called specific heat capacity symbolized with a capital C. Here's the definition. It's the amount of heat in joules typically that's needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by exactly one degree Celsius. You'll see that definition reflected in the units on a specific heat capacity, which are joules per gram degree Celsius. That definition and those units are final key idea. Make sure you've written them down. So let's wrap this up by applying our statement about heat capacity to the oil and water example and to this definition. Remember we said that substances with a higher heat capacity will absorb or release heat with smaller temperature changes. So you can actually look up the specific heat capacities of these different substances. Water has a specific heat capacity of 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, whereas oil, if this oil was olive oil, it only has a specific heat capacity of 1.97. 
clearly the water's heat capacity is much higher than the oils and remember what we said up here that a higher heat capacity means that that is a substance that can absorb heat with smaller temperature changes the water only went from 25 degrees up to 30 because its heat capacity is much higher the oil on the other hand with a lower heat capacity means it absorbed the same 2000 joules but with a much larger temperature change and that about wraps it up for this video on heat capacity here's a brief summary